So guys, gals, non-binary pals, I haven't done one of these in a while, but I'm here, I'm doing it now. And I do have sort of an announcement to make that I, I have sort of settled down into a regular schedule. So I think there's going to be um, weekly talking video uploads um, every Friday for this channel and Figurama, my, my figure collecting channel, which hopefully you're subscribed to too. The Let's Plays and the long play videos are going to release just sporadically whenever they're done. But I definitely want to dedicate some sort of time to getting a regular schedule video out at this point and that's my plan hold me accountable to it so today i wanted to my favorite my favorite types of games that i've said multiple times for are role-playing games i don't play uh necessarily a lot nowadays just because of time constraints rpgs nowadays are made like 200 hour like epic sagas and i don't have time for that <laughs> sorry but i do love narrative games too like you know uncharted and things like that so even if it's, you know, not a role-playing game, but it's got a good, nice, strong single-player narrative too, I definitely dig those types of games. And, you know, the 32-bit era, if you do watch the channels, my favorite era of all time. And, you know, I wanted to, you know, talk about some of the RPGs for that era. So I came up with the top five list today. This is another top five list of the top five, in my opinion, the top five RPG intros of all time. Now my criteria for this, what I mean by intros, I'm not just talking about the opening cinema. If I was just talking about the opening cinema, then Final Fantasy like eight would be the champion <laughs> every time. But I'm talking about sort of, you put a new RPG in the system, you watch the opening cinema, amazing, but then you have to play a little bit too. Meaning that open, the opening introduction to the RPG, these are some examples of RPGs that sort of really set the tone from, you know, the first couple quests or something like that. The first, you know, maybe 30 minutes to an hour of the game where it sort of, you know, set the tone where, hey, this game is gonna be special. This game is gonna be different. Cause that is one thing RPGs, uh, some RPGs in the past have done wrong is they're so, so boring <laughs> at the start, right? And it takes a while for it to get going and a while to get good. And you know, some of those RPGs in the past past me has skipped those just because they were such a they were just so boring to get to the good stuff right these rpgs on the list are like straight from the go they're like a hundred they're like going from zero to a hundred right at the opening the opening shot right when you start to control you're like hey this is a special experience remember this is my list my personal list nothing wrong with it right 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 so tell me your list hello subscribe and comment let's get to it Number five on my list I've talked about before. And again, it came out in the era of the PlayStation. It's a 32-bit game, yes, on the PlayStation, made by Squaresoft. But it was super different than the other RPGs at the time. So most people that got it, got it, because it was Squaresoft. It also came with a Final Fantasy VIII demo disc, which also helped people, you know, get it. But but you know, most RPGs around that day were sword and sorcery sort of things, you know, like uh, old timey stuff, riding horses, using swords and shields and spears and stuff like that. Well, Parasite Eve was a, it was set in sort of a modern world. You were a police officer named Aya Bree. And like I described in the intro, just the, the opening scene to the game, the opera house, if you've played the game, you know. You, you, you know, you start out the game in sort of an opera house. You get these crazy cinemas and the cinemas honestly don't make a lot of sense at the beginning either, right? And that, that's a strength of the game. But right from the get go, you tell, you can tell that you're gonna be in for a different kind of adventure that you've never been on before. You get to drop right in to this, to this major event happening at the opera house. And you know, people getting burnt alive and and all this stuff and you're sort of the sole survivor of it and a lot of rpgs at the time didn't have that survival horror elements to it and and parasite eve had that that vibe to it that survival horror vibe to it 
So it was definitely, it was so different in that, that opening, the whole opera opening that I'm talking about here, the opera and then when you go into the sewers and everything, it, it was so different and so engaging. Um, the battle system right off the bat was super unique too. And man, 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 when I did the first, you know, opening scenes of Parasite Eve, I 100% knew I was in for something special and I do love the whole game of Parasite Eve is just a fantastic game. It's definitely one of Squaresoft's best from the PlayStation era. And just that opening scene gets you so excited for, for the survival horror, the different adventure you're gonna take. Number four. All right, number four on my list is yes. It's another PlayStation game. <laughs> Are you? Uh, but it, it, it's a it's a game that a, a lot of people. It is on a lot of people's favorite RPG of all time list. The very grandiose adventure, and it, again, it's very different than the other RPGs at the time. And this one was super excited because you know it was it was very intense the opening areas, but it was also very very mysterious, very cryptic. So it really piqued my interest especially from the opening cinema. And I, I said, I'm not judging these intros from the opening cinema, but the opening cinema of Xenogears on the PlayStation was awe-inspiring. It was amazing. And it was so cryptic and mysterious. It, it peaked, peaked my interest to no end. And it was a little bit of a roller coaster ride because you had that opening cinema with that mysterious ending. You know, the, the lady just standing on the beach there, the naked lady standing on the beach. But then you go to a village and you're playing as Faye and you're just, you know, nonchalantly going through the village, doing some mundane things, and you're not really building a connection yet. And then as, as you know, you play through just a little bit more, you know, something happens in the village. I'm not 100% going to spoil everything, this this thing, but, you know, some, some mechs, giant mechs sort of appear in the village and you actually get in one and control it and, you know, start fighting back, starting to defend the village, things go wrong. And different people, different friends of Faye, obviously know there's more to Faye than meets the eye. And these scenes were super intense because the village gets attacked and then it gets destroyed. And, you know, a lot of innocent people get killed. And, you know, Faye is wrestles with the fact that it could be his fault and like seriously from these opening scenes it really sets the stage for you know this mysterious like gigantic xenogears is a huge game there's so many moving parts and the storyline is amazing the graphics are amazing the battle system i think is okay it's not my favorite of all time but again it gets you super hyped for a different type of experience especially with the mech battles right because you can battle as a human or a mech which sort of gets shown to you pretty early in the game. And it's easily one of my favorite RPG introductions of all time because it does take you through that roller coaster ride. And, and I, again, it's super mysterious, super cryptic. It really gets you excited for the rest of the game to learn sort of the mysteries of, of what's going on in the opening scenes. Number three. All right, number three. We're not on the PlayStation anymore, but guess what? We're on the Xbox 360 for a little ditty called Lost Odyssey. Honestly, one to three on this list could be in any order. I think Lost Odyssey has easily one of the best introductions of all time. Again, it's not just that opening intro. The opening intro is amazing but the thing that lost odyssey does is that opening intro turns right into gameplay so it goes right into sort of you know the world building you know there's stuff going on there's a giant battle going on bam you're right in the battle now you're controlling the main character in the battle and as you go through the battle you know the music's pumping there's a super cool scenes it really gets you hyped up for the game and then at the end of, of sort of the battle, you know, a meteor crashes down and basically kills everybody except for you. 
except for the player. And you're literally just wondering why. Like, what just happened? Like, I was on this battle, this super huge battle, hundreds of, of, of soldiers and, and, and machines battling it out, blood everywhere, a meteor hits and burns everybody, kills everybody there. But you don't have one scratch on you. You're walking through the battlefield and you know, you go to the city after that to sort of try to figure out, you know, what's going on. But you know, if, if you don't know a lot about Lost Odyssey, especially the story beforehand, like it was super like eye-opening. It was so intense, that opening scene. And it was just like, bam, well, why am I still alive? And it really, really makes you really invested in the story. You actually meet right up with another soldier that actually survived the battlefield too. And, and you know, you do sort of form a relationship with them because maybe, you know, you two are special in some way without, you know, ruining the story if you've never played it. But man, I'm telling you that opening scene is so intense. It's so good. It's so good. It really, again, hypes you up for the game. You know you're in for a special experience. You know, you know, you want to figure out what's going on with these characters, why they're still alive and all that stuff. Oh, it's so good. Number two. Back to PlayStation. <laughs> Uh, obviously, my favorite RPG of all time, Final Fantasy VII, spoiler alert, is this pick, number two. Like, Final Fantasy VII, I've said many times before, was life-changing to me. And, oh, that, those opening sections. I know it's nostalgia talking, but, you know, when the game first starts and you're, you know, it's going through the cinema, you see air, the train's going in, and the camera swoops in, and you're right off the train, that pump and music is playing. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's so intense and so special. Like I said, a lot of RPGs have very slow beginnings and Final Fantasy VII was just like, bam, you're in the heart of it. This is it, go. The best thing to me about the opening sort of Mako reactor scenes were the music. The music got, you, got me so pumped. Such the music is un unreal, and you got sort of a fast introduction to the characters. You got a fast introduction to obviously the combat system, which was really fun at the time. It was next gen at the time, right? And again, you can tell from the intro how special the game was gonna be. I will never forget the opening sections of Final Fantasy VII. Never, never, never. It it you know opened my eyes to the world of next gen RPGs, and it was you know so exciting. It was so groundbreaking. It pumped me up so much for the adventure because it was just like excitement, excitement, action right from the get go. Number one. I, I cheated for this one. It's three games actually, but uh, they're very similar. And like literally, 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 there's no opening to any RPG that gets me as pumped as a Kingdom Hearts intro. And if you're a fan of the Kingdom Hearts series, you know what I'm talking about. Because each Kingdom Hearts game has a unique theme by, by the Japanese artist Hikari Yutada. And literally, as soon as that cinema starts, that mysterious cinema, the music starts, my blood, my excitement level goes through the roof. And I'm not just talking about the opening cinemas, right? Each Kingdom Hearts games has that little sort of tutorial area at the beginning where it sort of, you know, catches you up on old games and you go through and you choose, you know, which weapons and abilities you, you want to prioritize over others. You get introduced to the world, you get introduced to the Heartless. And Kingdom Hearts 2 definitely did this best because after that you actually got to the section that I consider it an intro section where you're actually not playing as Sora. Sora's the main character in the rest of the games. Well, in Kingdom Hearts 2, you are actually a different character named Roxas. And just like Xenogears a little bit, the storyline and you know how cryptic a lot of things are, things that are said in the opening cinemas of Kingdom Hearts and the opening areas, as it builds up to the sort of this mystery, which is where 2 excelled in, like I was talking about, because you, you're playing through the intro and you think one thing's happening and slowly, 
slowly but surely, it's changing. The mood of the game is changing, and the anticipation is just building up as you as you get through these sort of opening areas, these mysterious cryptic opening areas. So you get that huge shot of adrenaline from those opening cinemas, and then you settle into a right, and then you settle into your what you think is your regular adventure, but then it just builds up the anticipation for you know. Uh, a special journey you're about to go on with one, two, and three. I love all three Kingdom Hearts mainline games. I've played a lot of the side stories too, and it's no different. I mean, Kingdom Hearts, the, the signature opening thing to Kingdom Hearts is just like, oh. if you're a fan and you hear that music starting, any of the themes, you know you're about to start an amazing, amazing journey, and it gets me so pumped and so excited. I'm so hyped up for Kingdom Hearts 4 to come out. And I, I definitely love all the intros, one, two, and three. You know, one has probably the, the the simplest intro, two has probably the best, like I've said, and three just was a beautiful game that brought it all together. And it gets me so hyped, so hyped. I love, I love the opening cinemas for those games. I love that, you know, opening area where you're in sort of, you know, mysterious world with the, the symbols on the ground. If you know, you know. So they're definitely my favorite RPG introductions of all time. Again, the first part of an RPG that gets you really excited and really lets you know you're in for a special adventure. And I've never done this before for a list, but I do have some honorable mentions. So there's, there's some games that I did want to mention that didn't quite make the list, even though they probably could have or should have. I don't know. Like Final Fantasy VIII, I mentioned earlier. Final Fantasy VIII. The opening cinema, the music in the opening cinema are just amazing. It's one of the best in the Final Fantasy franchise for sure. But like I said, it's not just about the opening cinema. Once you actually get to the game, the game does start out pretty slow. So you got that super high from the cinema and then you're in school doing algebra. So it's an honorable mention. The next honorable mention is that uh, this definitely was on the top five at one point and I sort of had the bump it down because you know it, it it's not as grandiose as maybe some of the other ones however nostalgia wise it is one of my favorite bits of a game ever it's final fantasy 3 on the super nintendo or 6 wherever part of the world you're from um you know what i'm talking about when you're you know looking over the cliff with your magitech armor with you know your buddies you got a slave collar on so you, you know don't really know what's going on and then they're going to a town to sort of, uh, you know, look into sightings of an esper. And, oh gosh, just the camera pulls back. The Mode 7 is going on. The mechs are walking away in the background with the snow blowing. And that music starts. That music starts. It is one of the quintessential, most iconic RPG moments of all time, this opening cinema. The credits roll, if you actually let the, if you actually let it play, they'll actually walk closer and closer to the city as you go, or you can start past it. But I mean, I, I had never seen anything like that when I played Final Fantasy 3. It was just like, you know, right at the beginning of the game too, it's just like, man, this game is gonna be special. And you know, maybe it should be on the list, I don't know. But it's definitely one of the most iconic RPG introduction moments of all time, for sure. And the last the last honorable mention to me, this might give me some flack, I guess, is, is Final Fantasy X. X. Final Fantasy X, I think, honestly had one of the best opening cinemas of any Final Fantasy game also. The opening cinema was amazing. Again, it was super cryptic, super mysterious. I guess I kind of like that, you know what I mean? Like it makes you wonder, hey, what's going on? Because, you know, you're playing Blitzball and some giant creature attacks and just the, the fidelity of the cinema and the way they did the cinema was so amazing. Um, but again, it was it's like Final Fantasy VIII a little bit. It does crash a little bit after that. And, you know, Final Fantasy X is definitely not one of my favorite of all time. I absolutely did not like the storyline in Final Fantasy X at all. The storyline is the worst of all time, in my opinion. So, that's why it's not on the list. It goes, you know, up like that, and then, you know, it shoots uh, pretty down pretty quick after that. In my opinion, of course. I'm sure yours is different. Tell me, 
down below. All right, so guys, guys, non-binary pals, thank you. Thank you for watching another video. I had a lot of fun making this one, so I hope you had fun watching it. And like always, let me know your thoughts below. Let me know, chat with me. As of December 1st, we're running a Christmas sale on the store, shop.enemyzero.com, and 15% off. So go to the store, check it out, see if there's anything cool you want. And uh, I don't know, let's have some fun. Enjoy your games. Peace out.